Attack of the Clones turns 20 today, which means it's old enough to ask the Phantom Menace to buy it alcohol without it being weird, which is a good thing because you pretty much need to drink in order to experience this film properly. For those of you that haven't seen Attack of the Clones a hundred times, here's the plot. Okay, so the ex-Queen of Naboo's body double gets blown up, so everyone is scared about her safety. So Jedi Knights Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi are tasked to protect her. One night, an assassin airdrops some evil slugs into Padme Amidala, the queen who was voted out of being a queen but is now a senator's room, and they're gonna kill her. But Anakin kills the slugs, and Obi-Wan sees the assassin's iPhone and jumps out the window to catch it. There's a cool car chase, and then our Jedi follow the assassin into a bar, and Obi-Wan tells a guy to stop taking drugs and to get his life back on track. The assassin tries to kill Obi-Wan because she actually loves drugs, and Obi-Wan stops her, and then they interrogate her outside. She's just about to say who hired her, but then a really cool guy throws a dart that kills her from like three miles away. So since Padme, you might remember her as the woman with a different haircut in every scene, is clearly still in danger of being killed, the Jedi Council decides that Anakin should take her to her homeworld where she will be safer. Anakin loves Padme because she's the only woman he's ever seen who wasn't his mom. But the Jedi think Anakin is an incel and that there's no way he'd ever get laid. Meanwhile, Obi-Wan tries to investigate who could possibly throw a 5 gram dart 2 miles and he talks to his friend Dex down at the gas station. Dex has already seen this movie so he tells Obi-Wan that the dart is made by weirdo aliens who clone people and have really fancy chairs. So Obi-Wan goes to find Kamino on Google Maps, but he can't, so he asks the lady at the front desk why not. The lady tells him that Kamino doesn't exist and that he's stupid and cringe. Pissed off, Obi-Wan goes to Mexican Yoda, who's like the smartest guy over. Yoda says, Un planeta que Obi-Wan perdió, una vergüenza, ja, 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 ja. And everyone points and laughs at Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan now has to prove that he is in fact smart and not cringe, so he finds Kamino on ways. He goes there, and it turns out the Kaminoans were expecting him. They all get together and sit in their cool chairs that hang from the ceiling, and the Kaminoans tell Obi-Wan that the clone army they made for the Jedi is doing very well. Obi didn't know nothing about no clone army, but he plays it cool because he's tired of being laughed at. Turns out, the Jedi ordered the clone army like five years ago at a party, but they were all too drunk to remember. All the soldiers in this army are clones of the bounty hunter Jango Fett, who is like, top five coolest characters in Star Wars, and he's also Aquaman's dad. Obi-Wan goes to talk to this Jango guy, but Jango left his spacesuit out in the open, so now Obi-Wan knows that Jango killed the assassin from earlier by throwing the dart really far. Obi-Wan gets on Discord to ask the other Jedi what to do, and they say he should bring Jango Fett in for questioning. But Jango Fett wants to have an attorney present, which Obi-Wan won't allow, so they fight on a really slippery platform and it's really cool. Eventually, Jango Fett escapes on his ship, but Obi-Wan is also able to throw small objects absurdly far, so he sticks a tracking beacon onto his ship. Obi-Wan follows Jango into space, where they have a cool space dogfight, and Jango Fett drops a seismic charge that makes a badass sound. Obi-Wan fakes his space death so that he can follow Jango Fett to another planet to learn more. He goes snooping around but gets captured. And also, at the same time while all of this is happening, Anakin is trying to fuck Padme but just keeps messing it up. Padme and Anakin are booling on Naboo. The Jedi chose Anakin for this mission because he has zero game. After Anakin delivers the cringiest line of all time, Padme kisses him because she pities him. But Anakin runs it back by telepathically feeding Padme a pear, and as everyone knows, women love being telepathically fed pears. Despite the pear, Padme gets mad because she kissed him because women be complicated. Anakin and Padme go to bed, and Anakin has a spooky nightmare about his mom dying. Then Padme and Anakin decide to go to Sand Planet so they can save his mom from dying. They get there and they ask the offensive stereotype with wings what happened to Anakin's mom and he says, Hey, I sold her, LMAO. He sold Anakin's mom to this dude named Lars, so they go there. Lars tells Anakin that Shmi became his slave wife, which they will never discuss again, but she was captured by some sand people. So Anakin hops on a space motorcycle and he goes to where the sand people live. When he gets there, he sees his mom being tortured and then they talk for a bit and Shmi says that she loves Anakin and then she promptly dies. Anakin, very much pissed, commits genocide. Anakin gets back to where Lars and Padme are, throws a hissy fit, and then gets a Discord message from Obi-Wan saying he's been captured. If you remember, Obi-Wan was doing some snooping, but he got got, so Padme and Anakin decide to go save Obi-Wan. Meanwhile, Obi-Wan is being interrogated slash roasted by Count Dooku, who used to be a Jedi but is now evil. 
Dooku straight up tells Obi-Wan that the president of space is actually evil, but Obi-Wan says, Nah, you crazy. Eventually, Padme and Anakin fuck up the rescue and they two get captured. The people of Bug Planet want to crucify Obi-Wan, Anakin, and Padme because this movie has gotten way too confusing. They attach them to big poles and then unleash evil CGI monsters to attack them. But, just in the Nick Fury of time, Jedi Master Samuel Jackson and the rest of the Jedi show up to stop the execution. Then, all chaos is unleashed as you have robots fighting monsters, fighting Jedis, fighting bug people. If you were a six-year-old right now, you would be shitting your pants. During this battle, Samuel L. Jackson cuts off Jango Fett's head right in front of his son, and it's, it's pretty traumatic. But the robots and bug people are winning, and they circle the Jedi. Count Dooku politely asks for their surrender, but Jedi Master Samuel L. Jackson says, Nah, fam, and if it wasn't for the clone army circling overhead, our heroes would certainly be dead. But the clone army fights off all the droids and the bug people, and they save the Jedi. Now the climax actually starts. So Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Padme hop in a plane to chase Dooku who ran away like a little bitch when he started losing. But the plane gets shot, Padme falls out, Anakin goes apeshit, Obi-Wan tells him to shut up, and then they get to Dooku's house. Dooku beats them up and cuts off Anakin's hand, but then Mexican Yoda shows up. Mexican Yoda and Dooku talk and fight with lightsabers and then throw things around with the Force. Yoda's clowning on Dooku, but since Dooku is a little bitch, he throws a thing at Obi-Wan and Anakin so Yoda is forced to catch it. Dooku runs away and Mexican Yoda is sad, but at least Obi-Wan and Anakin are still alive. Dooku has been a bitch this whole time because he has the President of Space's dick pics. Dooku hangs out with a mysterious guy who could be anyone and they agree to blackmail the President of Space. We see the President of Space looking over his new CGI army, and Anakin and Padme get secret married. Movie end. Is Star Wars Attack of the Clones the greatest film ever made? Yes. Have I seen any other movie? No. Do I think that's relevant? Also no. Is this video over? Yes.